every dimension of sustainability is linked to growing food the right way and eating the right food. My name is Dr. Vandana Shiva and uh, I started my life as a physicist. I did my PhD on the foundations of quantum theory on the topic of non-separability where quantum theory is telling us that everything is connected. This conference is about interconnections. Health was treated as separate from food, was treated as separate from agriculture and sustainability. This conference is bringing all this together. I realized that the connections on which food production is based were being shut out. The soil is connected to the plant. If the soils are diseased, the plants will be diseased. If the plants are diseased, people will be diseased. If you're pouring toxic chemicals, you will have cancer trains. If you're getting farmers to buy more and more inputs, they will get into debt, they will commit suicide. So I realized this was just too important and I left my university career um, and started to work on agriculture, saving seeds, promoting agroecology. Uh, started a movement called Navdanya, which is the biggest network of organic farmers and seed savers in India. But also realized you can't just tell farmers grow organic better and not have them find a way to sell what they grow because the whole market is committed to chemicals. So we created fair trade networks, so it's seed to the table. I think there's a transition taking place where we take pride in the local. We take pride in knowing where our food comes from. So all of the 75% destruction can be dealt with by an ecological method of farming and we call it biodiversity intensive because the monoculture of the mind as I've called it is so much of the damage because a monoculture of the mind doesn't see what it's destroying it doesn't see what it's eroding it doesn't see what it's killing biodiversity compels us to look at every bit the microorganisms in the soil the pollinators and the butterflies that are being killed and the bees that are being pushed to extinction 75 percent health problems whether it be de deprivation of food linked to doing farming for commodities 90 percent of the corn and soya is not eaten by human beings it's being used to drive cars and torture animals that's not food we're pretending it's a food system and then at the end of it a system that is driving out small farmers because it's economically unviable. The disappearance of the family farm in Europe and US, the 284,000 farm suicides in India as this model gets imposed on our country, these are all emergencies of every kind, ecological emergency, health emergency, obesity, economic emergencies for rural communities. And we can deal with all of it by celebrating the Earth's potential, being more intelligent, not in our conquest over the Earth, but in our co-creativity and co-production with the Earth. We can do, produce more food, and we do it in Navdanya, the movement I started. We're producing two to three times more food, and we call it health and nutrition per acre, not yield per acre. And our farmers are earning five to 10 times more by using seeds of nutrition and health and taste, because everyone's looking for taste. They don't want to eat tasteless biomass. And um, with the quality and the chemical-free status and not wasting money on poisons, the farmers are better off. So everyone's better off. The problems are many. The solution is one. Ecolo farming in harmony with the earth, which is also food in harmony with our body. I really don't go along with this definition of one dollar a day. Very often fa people who are defined as poor because they have a dollar a day might be having the most abundant forests, the best of food, the best of culture, the best of music. So a dollar measure is not good. The well-being measure is better and around the world and I work with the government of Bhutan in going beyond GDP to gross national happiness and well-being. I think that's the measure we should have. Why don't people who have more than a dollar a day collaborate with those who don't? Well, the powerful are collaborating, but in a competitive way. Right. You know, in terms of 
deep non-sustainability. The tipping point has already been reached for the majority of the world's ecosystem. And I would say for the majority of the peoples of the world, not just in poor country, but new literature coming out of the rich world, the world that was rich, is about how you have a new precariat, a big class of the precarious. Half of Southern Europe, youth have no jobs. That's a very precarious class. Um, so the tipping point is already reached. Why hasn't it been noticed? Because of the locked-in paradigms. Um, we've just had an election where people who believe in the old neoliberal recipe are saying 93% of India doesn't contribute to the GDP. Well, that 93% of India contributes to India. Mm. You know, they keep the food growing, they keep the work growing, women don't produce, farmers don't produce because of the way GDP is only measured in terms of commodity production. Um, so those old habits of the mind, as Bill Clinton said, they're bad habits. Mm. Mm. We now know through science, they're bad science. Mm. We know through business, they're bad business because they have such huge externalities and they're very non-sustainable. And we know through democracy that they're bad politics because they're not taking people along. So where would we have a flip over effect um, to have the reality realized and bring enough forces to change? I think that shift will happen when those who can eat well and can afford to eat well throw their weight behind. Those who are eating well but their food's being taken away or their land's being grabbed through the big land grab or their seeds are being taken away, they're being pushed into poverty or the old poor who've never been allowed to come out of it. I think we need a new partnership and that is why I talk about We've got to realize we are not Swedes and Indians. We've got to realize, yes, we are men and women, but at the deeper level, we are all citizens of this one common earth. And that realization creates a paradigm shift in science, it creates a paradigm shift in economics, and it definitely creates a paradigm shift in ter terms of how we make decisions. Because then the earth becomes the measure, not Wall Street. For me, the one innovation is put biodiversity at the center of thought and action. 